up till now, we've built a current model based on a, just a very simple idea, more flow, more glow. And I can't remember which of my uh, teaching assistants came up with this uh, little mantra, more volt, more jolt, but it seems to be appropriate. And that's the subject of this week's tutorial, and we're going to give you a little bit of a head start, a little bit atypical, but we're going to talk about it actually first in lecture. Now, I'd like to start with this uh, sample problem I gave you at the end of day on Monday. And let's just go through your answers for that. You were all supposed to have worked it before coming to class, just like you were supposed to have done your reading. <clears throat> okay, first of all, uh, just really fast. We've just worked a problem similar to this. A versus B, which one's brighter? Shout it out. A. A. That's because all is more than part. B only gets part of the current through A. Uh, B and C, which is brighter? Shout it out. C. C. That's because C is on the path of least resistance. Current favors the path of least resistance. Current doesn't choose the path of least resistance. It favors the path, path of least resistance. I think that's easy to say, don't you? Okay, what about B and D? Shout it out. Series. They're equal. Okay, D versus E. It turns out that there's more current going down this branch, but E only gets half of that more. E is getting half of the large pizza. D is getting all of the small pizza. The current model fails. Okay, we're getting tired of seeing that. Uh, my model fails. I just, I can't do it. Okay, now, we added an extra wire. We took a connecting wire and put it between point one and point two. And the question is, what happens to bulbs A, B, D, and C? Check with your neighbor. See if your neighbor has a prediction of what's going to happen here. <clears throat> Okay. When I, when I put this on an exam, I found that this was a better teaching question than an exam question. We had a lot of stumbling on this question. And it all centered around one issue. And that is, is bulb C going to be lit at all with this wire there or will it be dark? Let me, let me give you a tool that you can use when solving these problems. That tool is your ability to redraw the circuit. You can redraw it any way you like as long as you don't change any of the electrical connections. What that means in practice is that I can connect this wire here anywhere along these other wires as long as I don't cross a bulb or a battery, as long as I don't cross a circuit element. In other words, have I changed the problem? No. 
Have I changed the problem? No. Have I changed the problem? No. And now let me ask you another question. No, let me ask you the same question. Will C have anything going through it or will it be completely dark? It will have something going through it. Okay? It's clear from this drawing that only B is shorted out. Only B is going to be completely bypassed by current. None will go through B. Kane? When what? If I bring this over to here? No. Uh, that's my point, is that by moving this connection anywhere along just a wire, I'm in no way changing what happens to the bulbs. These lines here just represent that A is connected to one side of B and to C. That's all these wires, or these lines. Ah, uh, if, if I go back to this, would the current come this way and then say, oh, there's an easier path? Yes, the point is, this easier path is still not a direct shot to the battery. From this point right here, I've got two ways to get back to the battery. I can go this way through a single bulb, or this way through a single bulb and a network of two bulbs in parallel. It will not all go this way. It favors the path of least resistance, doesn't choose the path of least resistance. Okay? Now, what happens to bulb A? Bulb A gets brighter, dimmer, stays the same. Shout it out. Good. Conviction in your voice. That's what I like to hear. The reasoning is several steps. I added a path. When I add a path, I do what to the, the resistance of the circuit? Goes down. When the resistance of the circuit goes down, the current where goes up? In the battery, the current in the battery. Why does that mean A gets brighter? A is an indicator bulb. All the current through the battery goes through A. A gets brighter. Bulb B, dark. It's shorted out. Anytime you have a wire from one side of the bulb to the other, it's shorted out. Bulb D, brighter, dimmer, the same. Okay, let's look at the splitting right here. Before I had this extra wire, which side got the bigger share? C or B? Yeah, more of the current was going this way. After I add this wire, I reduce the resistance on this branch so that it's even smaller than this branch. And so now when the current splits here, more than half goes this way. Oh, and by the way, there's more total current to divvy up. So both of those changes are making D brighter. There's more current through the battery, and D's share of that total current just went up. Okay, so D gets brighter. What about bulb C? I don't know. I don't know, because now I got the two effects going on, but they are fighting each other, competing each other. C is now getting a smaller share of the total current through the battery than it did before, but the total current through the battery went up. One of those effects would suggest C should get brighter. The other effect suggests C gets dimmer. And without knowing how much the battery current changed, we can't answer that question with our model. Is anyone besides me getting sick and tired of having a model that will not answer all questions? Okay, so let's do something about it. We always run up against the same dilemma. 
dilemma. We're always comparing all of a small pizza to part of a large pizza. And we can never make that comparison without knowing how much larger the large pizza is than the small pizza. So let's do something about that. From now on, whenever you get to one of these dilemmas where your current model fails, writing down my model fails is no longer good enough. Because now we're going to have a second model, the voltage model. And when you get one of these riddles like this, you want to immediately jump from one horse to the other. Switch horses. When the horse, this old Montana saying, when the horse you are riding dies, what? Get off. Get off. Okay? Okay. Let's, let's remind ourselves what this whole voltage means. What does volts mean anyway? If I measure with a voltmeter across that battery and find that it's 12 volts, that really is just a fancy way of honoring Dr. Volta. Really, we're saying nothing different than joules for each coulomb. And that's what the battery does chemically, is give 12 joules to each coulomb that flows through the battery. Now, if we were to take that voltmeter and put it across that single bulb, we would also find 12 volts, or 12 joules for each coulomb. But in this case, 12 joules is not being given to each coulomb that goes through the bulb, but taken from each coulomb that goes through the bulb. So the model, the cartoon that you should have in your head, this is the third time I've shown you this cartoon. One of these days you'll be able to just close your eyes and play it for yourself. Okay? This is the model. You should see those coulombs, those charges, moving around the circuit. Every time they go through the battery, they pick up 12 joules. When they go through the bulb, they deposit those 12 joules in the form of heat that causes the filament to glow. What about the currents? Well, it's the same everywhere. What goes around comes around. Again, the fourth time I've talked about that. Now, what about this circuit? What are the currents like now? Well, more flow, more glow. I know that these bulbs are dimmer than the last bulb. And they're the same brightness as each other, meaning that the current has to be the same. And indeed, the current through the battery is the same as the current through any one of the bulbs, because this is not a different current than that. It's just the same charge. Once it goes through this bulb, it goes through that bulb and back. If I take that voltmeter across the battery, what am I going to measure now? 12 volts. When you buy a battery, it has the voltage stamped right on the side. If you paid good money for that 12 volt battery, by golly, by golly, you want it to stay 12 volts. What about the reading on these voltmeters? If I were to hook up these bulbs and uh, actually make a, a reading by reaching across there, what would I get if there were 12 volts across the battery? What would this one have? Six. And this one? Six, that's exactly right. Six and six. Now, the current looks like that. And the question is, what do we mean by sharing? Remember, there's two ways to share. Share a book, share a pie. How do these bulbs share the current, the flow, the blueberry juice that's going through? Book or a pie? Book. First the current goes through one bulb, then you, when you're done reading the book, you pass it on to your friend, your friend reads the book. Okay? How does this, how do these bulbs share the voltage, the 12 volts of the battery? Like a pie, they split it. Okay, they split it. Okay, six and six. Check that your neighbor's on the bus, would hate to lose a neighbor.
Any, any questions? Questions? Julie. I'm sorry? Can it switch it? Is there any time where I can switch it? Uh, share voltage like a, oh, um, share voltage like a book. Yes, we'll get there. We'll get there. OK, folks, again, I really want you to have a cartoon in your head of what's going on in these circuits. What I see in my head in this two bulb series circuit is something like this. Again, what goes around comes around. I got the same current everywhere in the circuit, the same number of, of coulombs passing any point each second. Each time they go through the battery, they pick up 12 joules. Half of that energy is deposited in this bulb, half is deposited in that bulb. Now, that really brings up an important question. How do it know? How does it know to take just half of the, the energy and leave half for its friend? How does it know? We're going to take a field trip. I know there wasn't one listed in the catalog, and we didn't charge you any fees. But we're going to go on a field trip anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to start down here on campus. And we're going to, well, we're going to need uh, transportation. Let's get us a jet. And that jet is going to take us up there. What's the name of that peak? OK. And it's just going to mumble, mumble. A bunch of hikers, huh? OK. That, that uh, plane is going to drop us off right there on the top of Mumble Mumble Peak. <laughs> and the change in potential energy for each person, assuming that we have 75 kilogram persons, clearly I didn't go, um, and G is 10 newtons for each kilogram. This is just MGH. Uh, that's a thousand meter rise and so that means for each person that we took on this field trip there was the plane delivered a change in potential energy of 750 thousand joules. Now we walk home and we just go right along the ridge we come down across the M and back to where we started with. What is the change in potential energy, gravitational potential energy, for each person. Shout it out. 750,000. Positive or negative? Negative. It gets a positive 750,000 joules going up, negative coming down. Now, because that's the easiest way down, <coughs> Let's say that it's the front row here that we dropped off up there, OK? And everyone decides to take that easy path down <coughs> the trail. Except, who's up there at the top? Michael. That's Michael. Michael sees that there's more than one way back to campus. He's not a follow the crowd sort of guy. He sees that there's this way as well. Now, what's the change in gravitational potential energy for each person on this path? Same, minus 750,000 joules. And the only difference is that's a lot harder path to get down. And that's why, since the resistance along this easy path along the ridge is so small, I have a lot of people going that way. That's the big current. On this other path that's hard, that's a huge resistance. And so as a result, only Michael goes that way, a small current. OK. With your neighbor, discuss this question. What in the world does that have to do with electric circuits? OK. Talk to your neighbor.
Okay. Here's a circuit with more than one path. And my question to you is, where is the airplane in this picture? Where's the airplane? The battery. The battery gives energy to each coulomb, not people, coulombs, that uh, pass through the battery. Now, which of these paths is the ridge run that's the easy way to go? Yeah, that's this one here with only one bulb on it. And that's where you get a lot of current flowing. This is the hard path that only Michael goes on. And the question is, if that's 12 volts, what's this? Is that 6 or is that 12? Okay, let's, let's answer, ask it a different way. The plane took you all up a thousand meters. Since you went down two different paths, did you only have to each go down 500 meters? No, that's silly. To get back to campus, you got to go down a thousand meters, whether you go the easy path, whether you go the hard path. It's, it's a thousand meters, okay? You went up a thousand meters, you got to come down a thousand meters. Okay, how bright are these bulbs? Well, that one's really bright. These are dimmer. We've done this in class. If I hook up that voltmeter there, I get 12 volts. I hook it up there, I get 12 volts. The full 12 volt. I hook it up there, I get 6. Good, you're catching on. Now what this means is that any path from one side of the battery to the other side of the battery I've got to drop 12 volts. I got to drop 12 volts. <clears throat> what about the currents here? Well, there'd be a lot of current there, a little bit of current there. That would be the sum of the two. And indeed, that's just analogous to who goes down those easy paths and the hard path. Let's summarize a little bit. The voltage model has several key ideas. Voltage itself is nothing more than energy, except it's the energy for each coulomb. That's the only difference. It's the energy for each coulomb, and this is the energy that is either gained in the battery or lost in the bulbs. What we are going to find over and over again uh, in this week's lab, and what we just saw in that circuit we just looked at, is that if I see two bulbs, identical bulbs, came from the same bulb factory, if one of those bulbs is really, really bright, and the other one's really, really dim, I can take my voltmeter and put it across the bright one and then the dim one, but it would be a waste of time. Because I know, without even using that voltmeter, that the bright bulb's going to have the bigger voltage across it. The more volts across the bulb, the brighter that bulb's going to be. So that's the more volts, more jolt. More volt, more jolt. And finally, what goes up must come down. Any one piece of charge, if you watch this flow of charge through your circuit, if you were to grab one of those charges, I'll call it an electron, grab it and paint it green, and then you watch its path as it goes through your complicated circuit, that one green electron can only take one of the many paths back to the battery. Michael can either go down the hard path or the easy path, but he can't go down both, okay? And so that means for each individual path from one side of the battery to the other, I've got to come down the 12 volts of the battery. What goes up must come down. Voltage rises and drops must be equal around any loop. I know you're listening to me. I know you're watching my lips flap. I'm not entirely sure that you're believing me. Let's, 
Let's check. I've got this circuit here, 12 volt battery, and I've got three bulbs. How would you rank those bulbs? What would be the brightest bulb? The top one, obviously. And uh, I'm just going to represent that with a darker red line. Now my question to you is, if I were to measure the voltage across that bulb, would I get something bigger than 6 volts, equal to 6 volts, or less than 6 volts? Talk to your neighbor. Let's see if you believed anything I've said. Taking the week off. So like I didn't realize we had a tutorial this week for 206. So I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought we had, you know, 205 didn't have something to have it. Didn't get in the way of 206, thank goodness. <clears throat> okay, people, time to vote. Don't let me down. Those who say greater than 6 volts. Those who say equal to 6 volts. Those who say less than 6 volts. Okay, we kind of split the class between these two. And what you are struggling with in your brains right now, what the, the real issue you're wrestling with is this one right here. If I call this voltage across A, voltage across B, and voltage across C, what exactly is it that adds up to 12 volts? Is it A plus B plus C, or is it just A plus B? Talk to your neighbor about that question. Okay, time to vote again. Those who say that this is the truth. Those who say that this is the truth. That's our problem. That's why we didn't agree on the first question. Because we don't know what adds up to 12. So let's go back to me flapping my, my lips a minute. If I take one of those electrons and paint it green, it has to go from one side of the battery to the other. And it can either go through B, through A, and back, or it can go through C and A and back. Can't go on both of those paths. So that means if it goes on B and A and back, those two voltages have to add up to what? 12. 12. So this is the truth. Remember, the words we used around any single path from one side of the battery to the other has to add up to the 12 volts of the battery. So that means VA plus VB has to equal 12, and that means VA plus VC has to equal 12. Now those of you that are really, really, really good at math, what does that tell me about VB and VC? they got to be equal to each other. Now, let's concentrate on just VA and VB. I see that one of those is a really, really bright bulb, and one of those is a really, really dim bulb. i got to divide up 12 volts between them. Is it 50-50 or some other way? Some other way. This bright bulb's got to have more volts than this dim bulb. It's got to add up to 12. That means that this one has to have greater than 6 volts. Now, I'm going to make up a number here, folks. I'm going to make up a number. If I say that's 9 volts, what's that? What's that? Good. Good. All right. 
Now let's ask ourselves why. Why should that bulb up there have so many more volts across it than the other two bulbs? And when we think of using the voltage model, it's convenient to put things into boxes that are in series with each other. And remind ourselves that A is not in series with B, A is not in series with C, A is in series with this whole network. And then I ask myself, if I took voltmeters, which box, which blue box, would have the bigger number of volts across it? Well, that's going to be that, that top one. And then if I ask myself, which network, which blue box, has the bigger resistance, that's the top one. And here's the gut level understanding of voltage. Another way of talking about voltage is to use a technical term, a highly technical term called oomph. Okay? <laughs> voltage is the oomph of the battery, the ability of the battery to push current. How much current goes through this box compares to the current goes through this box? Which box has more current going through it? They're in series with each other. Same. It's got to be the same. There's no place else for it to go. When the current, when all the charges flow through here, they got to flow through the second box to get back to the battery. Now, that means that the battery is pushing oomph charge through both of those boxes. It's going to use up its 12 volts of oomph more on which box? the harder box. It's harder to get charge to flow through this box than this box. I got to get the same number of charges each second through both boxes. More of my voltage, more of my oomph of the battery is going to be across that box there. For series networks, the voltage drop is greater across the larger R. True principle. Now, I would like to go back to some of these mysteries that we uncovered at the beginning of class, some of these places where our current model utterly failed, and show you how trivial those are with our voltage model. Let's go to this one here. We were not able to rank B versus D, okay? With the voltage model, if I want to rank two bulbs, B and D, I find a path from one side of the battery to the other side of the battery that contains bulb B. And I say the voltage across A plus the voltage across B has to equal 12 volts. And then I find a path from one side of the battery to the other side of the battery that contains the other bulb, bulb D. And that goes through C plus D has to add up to 12 volts. Since these are both 12 volts, <clears throat> I can write it this way. VA plus VB has to equal VC plus VD. <laughs> okay? And I know how do A and how does A relate in brightness to C? Which is the brighter bulb, A or C? C? C is the brighter bulb. So when I compare the voltages A to C, which is the bigger voltage? Brighter bulb, bigger voltage. So that means VC is bigger than VA. It's a zero-sum game here. Me and my brother are just as strong as you and your sister. Okay? <laughs> if you're a lot stronger than me, your brother, my sister, I don't have a sister. It's your sister. Okay, anyway, that means that VB has to be bigger than VD. Because it's a zero-sum game. 
Look at it this way. A is brighter than, uh, C is brighter than D. If it's a zero sum game, this one has to pick up less slack than that one. So B is going to be the brighter bulk. Questions on that? Let's try it again. Let's look at it a different way. I've still got five minutes, folks, and we're going to need it. It's a 12 volt battery. If I use that voltage model I just gave you, how do I divide the 12 volts between these bulbs here? Six and six, they're identical resistances. So I'd have six volts there, six volts there. On this other branch, I would have greater than six volts here. How do I know that? It's brighter than this one. If this one's six volts, this has to be bigger than six volts. That makes this one less than six volts. And so that means B at 6 volts has to be brighter than D at less than 6 volts. Check that your neighbor's on the bus. Yes. Does this also have limits to that? Because if you don't, if you have more than one ball, then you can't do it anymore. Uh, there are some cases where the voltage model breaks down, and then you switch to the current model. But one of them will always give you the right answer. Okay, up until now, we have had a piece of our current model that was just a little bit flimsy. We said that if I do something to this branch over here, if it's connected directly parallel to the battery, it would be completely independent from this branch. I could tap dance on this bulb, these bulbs wouldn't care. And the reason for that, oh, it's just an observation. We saw it in, in lab, trust me. But now we see why that is. Each of these paths, each of these branches rather, have their own connections to the battery. Meaning there has to be 12 volts across this branch and this branch. Changing anything over here doesn't change the fact that I've got 12 volts pushing across this branch. That's why they're independent. Now, if I put that indicator bulb in there, suddenly the independence is gone. We found last time that we were not able uh, to predict what would happen to the brightness of bulb A when we close this switch. Now let's do it with the voltage model. I close that switch, what happens to the current through the battery? Yeah, it goes up. And that means the current through bulb A, that indicator bulb rather, not A, the indicator bulb, has to get bigger. Now if that gets bigger and the bulb gets brighter, what happens to this voltage here? Gets bigger, brighter bulb, more volts. That has to get bigger. It's a zero sum game. This voltage plus this voltage plus this voltage have to add up to 12. So if this one just got bigger, what happened to A and B? Got smaller. So A and B is going to, they're going to get smaller. Okay? I've got two more minutes. A gets dimmer. Last question. D versus E. B plus D have to have the same voltage across them as C and E. Which is brighter, B or C? Thank you. 18.